What's good, Bucket Busters? This is your host, Ro Zapanta, and this is my co-host, the glorious, the notorious, Tim Johnson. Rip City! And this is the Busted Bucket Podcast, locally grown here in Portland, Oregon, the city of roses, the city of bridges, Stumptown PDX. We are showing no rules, just a couple of friends who so happen to love Portland basketball. Tim Johnson. Yes, sir. How you living, my friend? I'm doing great. Doing great, my friend. I'm doing great, too. And you know, it's happy. It's it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Today. It is Mother's Day today. It's, it's Mother's, Mother's Day, Day today. And I just got to shout out. I got to shout out the moms of the pod, Rachel, Erica, Mar. So happy Mother's Day to them and happy Mother's Day to all the female listeners, all the female listeners that are that are uh, that are moms. And, you know, Tim. What, what did you do for Mother's Day? You know, I actually sent my wife and her mom out to get pedicures today. Took care of the kids and yeah. uh, bought my wife some sushi. We had some sushi tonight. It was, it was a good day. Nice, man. That's that's definitely the way to treat your girl is to go out. Loki, tell her to go go treat herself, right? Yeah, treat yourself. Go get a pedicure. <laughs> a, a pedicure. <laughs> go get your hair fixed. <laughs> go get your hair did, Anyway. Too. That's right. Anyway, I hope... You female listeners, just, we're spoiled today. Absolutely spoiled. And now, here is a word from our sponsor. Get a little more out of watching NBA games with Daily Fantasy. Every CJ step back, canter rebound, or Dame game winner means so much more when you're playing with DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code TBPN for your shot at millions of dollars in total prizes throughout the week. That's promo code TBPN to get a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. With that being said, you know, we're going to go through the NBA standings because the wild, wild west just gets even wilder. So at number five, we have the Mavericks. The Mavericks at 40 and 28. And at number six, of course, it's us. It's the Blazers, 39 and 29. We have the toughest schedule. It's backloaded. We get Utah, Phoenix, and Denver. Who knows how those games are going to play out. We are chasing the Mavericks spot. And we own the tiebreaker against the Mavs and the Lakers, who are at number seven. The Lakers are at number seven with 37 and 30. Dennis Schroeder and LeBron James can't stay on the freaking floor and neither can Anthony Davis because he's got back spasms. The Warriors have the tiebreaker over the Spurs and they have an upcoming game against the Grizzlies who are at number nine. The 10 is the Spurs. Holy moly. This is going to be an absolutely crazy playoffs. Yeah. That's going to be nuts. Absolutely crazy. That's going to be nuts. I mean, just thinking about how all these shuffles could happen, who knows who we're going to play against. This is absolutely amazing. And, you know, I actually have a video clip from one of the games, one of the recent games. It's actually against the Lakers. And it's from Coin6 with Jenny Young. RJ, play the video, my friend. Ecstatic, you know, uh, just pumped, just more just raring to get in. Ben Calentine, or Blazer Ben, as he's known on his podcast on the Basketball Network, pretty much summed up the feelings Man. of most fans lucky enough to spend Friday night at the Moda Center. So I hope Thank you, RJ. Blazer Ben. Blazer Ben from, from the podcast. What was it? What did he say? From the Basketball, from the basketball Podcast. Podcast Network. <laughs> basketball Network. Blazer Ben is actually joining us on the pod tonight. How are you, my friend? Bingo, bango, bongo, baby. You know, just recouping my <laughs> voice from uh, being in that first in-person game. You know, I was a little, yeah. little hoarse the last couple of days. So, you know, you were glad ecstatic. to be here and, and you know, <laughs> I li- yeah, I was, I was ecstatic. You say ecstatic. <laughs> Absolutely ecstatic <clears throat> to have you, Blazer Ben. And Jenny, it's okay that you got the network wrong. It's the Basketball Podcast Network. It's all right. And he's from the Busted Bucket. Come on now. The Busted Bucket (laughs) Podcast. Anyway, we had a win against the Lakers. 106 to 101. Ben, can you just tell us what it was like in the building? 
Uh, first off, I just want to say I was very fortunate to be, you know, one of the 1900 fans in the arena in attendance that night. Uh, I was up in the 300 levels, up in, up in the high up rafter area, but you know, with 1900 people in there, you can hear everybody. You can hear everybody from the top for all the way down to the bottom yelling at the game. And, you know, as soon as the team came on the court for the warmups, I'm sure everybody's seen the video. Dame jumping ecstatic and elated. Ecstatic. <laughs> and then Rondé Hollis Jefferson going and doing the little ear right at center court. Oh, w- yeah, you that, know? Was, that was sick. You that can definitely sick. tell that the players were feeling the vibe, even though there was only 1,900 people in there. You know, and, and then one of the biggest fans in attendance was, you know, the owner was in the building. Miss Jody yeah. Allen mm-hmm. was sitting down there courtside with Neil yeah, O'Shea. Man. You know what's big Bert when she's got to be there. Yeah, Absolutely. oh, cup flying in from Seattle just to come into the first in-person game. Oh, yeah. You know, that's that's big time. You know, I, I, I love the way they did it. The Trailblazers had it unlocked. You know, security was good. Um, they were wiping down handrails all the time throughout the entire game. Nice. Uh, we did have three Laker fans next to us. Boo. Ooh. Oh, come on now. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> I know. How did they get tickets? Uh, this, I mean, pretty much everybody in attendance was a season ticket or knew a season ticket holder mm-hmm, yeah. uh, to obtain tickets. Because from what I heard, these didn't even go on sale to the public at all because they were sold out before I even got to that opportunity. You know? So I don't know how these three Laker fans got tickets, you know, looking over my right hand shoulder. But we'll just say we had a couple Blazer fans above them that were uh, enjoying themselves a little too much. <laughs> so they started getting into it. Way to go, with, little uh, city. Little heckling with, going on? <laughs> just a little bit of heckling. But, you know, it, it's nothing that it, wouldn't man. happen at a Blazer Laker game anytime you have it, you know. But the, the, yep. the ushers and the security went up and talked to the Laker fans. I'd probably say three, four times throughout the game. And, you know, so, mm. but as far as the game goes, the, the atmosphere was amazing. You know, intros, I'm not going to lie. I almost cried, literally. <laughs> yeah. I told, I, my girlfriend was with me and I looked over at her and I go, man, that just got teary eyed just watching those intros and, you know, seeing the smoke and hearing the, mm-hmm. the beats in the arena. And, you know, uh, like, and then like for being Weber again, State, right? the letter zero. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just uh, it's been so long. It feels like it's been forever. To, yeah. uh, since being in the arena and you know just just it, it, it was it, i was ecstatic i was gonna leave it at that <laughs> blaze you your know, bed, it, man it, 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 and to so walk out with that walk out with a win too they even did the streamers at the end of the game yeah you know the streamers say. the streamers were absent last year too mm-hmm. they did the whole full effect it's just a yeah uh, dude that's, that's awesome, awesome. I, got, I gotta know though like did was it did it seem loud in there like was it Ben, you well, go to, you go to games all the time, right? Like you yeah. know, you you remember, like it's like ingrained in your soul what it's like to be at a at, at a regular game, right? Like what what I know you said the vibe was awesome, but like comparatively, like how was it while you were there with only nineteen hundred fans? Yeah, well, I mean, there was a lot of Lillard MVP chants, stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, all it takes is one person to start that, and everybody gets oh, into yeah. it. The, the Beat LA chant, you know. Yeah. Uh, the people up behind me were yelling at Anthony Davis the entire time. You know, I'm sure he heard <laughs> yeah. it. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted to yell down at Cantor because he was just down there doing a dance, and I'm sure he would have heard me too. <laughs> if there was ever a time to tell players how you really feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely, they would hear you. <laughs> for I'm sure. From all the way up there too. Blazer Ben, thank you for giving us the inside scoop to that because, like, it is just such a blessing to have fans back in the stands. And Dame Lillard might be responsible for this. I mean, shortly after, he was talking about, hey, we're going to be the only team that doesn't have fans in the stands. Like, is this for real? They changed their tune real quick. We got fans in the stands. It seems like it was very, very safe there, too, which is also a plus. We're going to get to reviewing the game here. Tim, I want to know. Yeah. How did you think Dame Lillard did against the Lakers? Hey, man. How can you say he didn't play great when he put up 38-7? and 7? Like 38-7? Yeah. and 7? You know he was happy to have fans back in the stands, man. Like, incredible. I mean, it seems like his his slump is over, right? Like, he's he's putting it down. He was happy, man. Like, you saw it when he came out out of the tunnel man he was he was so happy to be there and to see all the all the fans looking down and man i i wish i was there because like i i'm sure just like (laughs) 
Blazer Ben, I'd have got a little teary eye too. But man, Dame Dame took yeah. off, man. He, he did what he, he did what he had to do to lead his team to victory. And you know, CJ played well. Um, what I what I really enjoyed watching though was the bigs. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of the bigs anyway, right? Like that that's the game I love. I know you love small ball. I'm I'm too old school for that. Like seeing Nurk and Cantor both put up double doubles against AD and and the with Drummond and and what's the old uh, Gasol? Mark Gasol. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mark Gasol. Mark Gasol. Oh my God, man. he looked like he was 45, 50 years old out there. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> I don't know. The jury's out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, man. All I'm saying is, like, you know, la- last last time we talked, um, we had we had talked about, you know, how was Cantor gonna do against uh, Drummond and, and Gasol and Davis, and you know, he did all right. He did just fine. Ten and ten. Yeah. I'll take that every night of the week. Yeah. I mean, Blazer Ben, what did you think of the game? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Lakers made a lot of unforced errors, which, you know, luckily helped us out. You know, Kuzma was playing probably one of the worst games of his entire career. Oh, he played you know, awful. Old man Caruso. I mean, yeah, I think Caruso's like 20-something, but, you know, doesn't look <laughs> it. But, you know, it also helped that Andre Drummond got in foul trouble real quick. So yeah. it took that, it took him out of the equation. You know, one less big to clog up the middle. Uh, and then you had Kuzma come in. Or not Kuzma, sorry, excuse me. Marc Gasol came in and he just looked stagnant, like he'd been riding the bench. And, and, and so, you know, it, it helped us, you know. Uh, one thing, I just want to give a shout out, though. We did see Wessie West, you know, Mr. We Matthews did see West. on the Lakers. He's still shooting the three and he's still pulling out the bow and arrow, folks. Yeah. I he's hate that he's a Laker, though. He's still doing the bow and arrow. <laughs> I, I hate that he's a Laker. He invented the bow and arrow here in Portland, though. So he did. he's just taking it with him for his career. It's true. Love it. You know, I'd like to see some of the old Blazers successful, you know, like mm-hmm. Wes Matthews or, or oh, Nick yeah. Batum or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Some of them I could, you know, care less about, but I, I was good to see good to see Wes. I forgot Same he was on the Lakers when they he came in off the bench, you know. So, yeah, I love to see some of those old um, Blazer players too. From especially like specifically from that era, like if I see like Rolo and like his hair, it always just brings a smile to my face. <laughs> yeah. Like or body Robin, slamming a mascot, like randomly, exactly. <laughs> like Ron, like randomly, just see like Robin Lopez. But man, you know the Lakers. Um, Anthony Davis, he did not want this game to go to us this game obviously meant a lot and i think they absolutely knew it because they needed that tiebreaker against us they needed the tiebreaker to get that sixth spot and anthony davis 36 and 12 are you freaking kidding me he does not look like he has had recent back spasms or that it was a problem at least that for that game they must have shot him up with some some good medicine or something because he actually looked pretty fresh pretty spry but we were just lucky that I think the crowd gave our team quite that extra the, added push, that ac- oh, yeah. that extra push, especially yeah. on the defensive end. Yeah. You know, I've I got mean, some stats here. Um, so average defensive rating for the league is about 110. All the starters under 110. Two of the three bench players that played, sorry, three of the four bench players that played also under 110 the only one that was over 110 was ronde hollis jefferson ronde hollis jefferson yes (laughs) who played (laughs) one minute which is pretty impressive very impressive and i would say that the eyeball test definitely matched the stats tim what were you gonna say Oh, I was just going to say, it bears to mention that another thing that helped the Blazers win is the fact that there was no LeBron James. I mean, that's that yeah. was kind of a big one. Um, you know, I mean, but he's that, all right. Yeah, he's okay. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's probably retiring next year, right? Um, you know, I, I think I think the, the fans did a, a good job of lifting this team for sure. Um, but you know, I was going to ask you guys, I was going to wait until after we talked about the Spurs, but since you brought it up, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So I'm just going to skip ahead real quick. The Blazers. Yeah, go for it. So I, I just checked the last 10 games last night while I was watching the game and over the last 10 games, the Blazers are ranked eighth in defensive, uh, in, in defensive rating, right? And first offensively. And this is over the last 10 games. 
my first question like what do you guys think has changed in the, from the beginning of the season to like this 10 game stretch here do you think it was Rondé Hollis Jefferson like do you think that's why Derek Jones Jr. was benched that Hollis Jefferson is really that big of a difference maker or do you think it's something more along the lines of you know obviously we're healthy now but you got Nurk finally getting a little more comfortable and maybe Norman Powell who I was honestly kind of a hater when he first got here just because he was undersized we like why do we need an un another undersized guard right but do you think it's the combination of the two of them kind of figuring out the game game plan and, and, and getting more comfortable with it Ben no. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick no. it to you my friend go for it I, I I'm going to I'm gonna debunk that real, real quick. Rondé Hollis Jefferson against the Spurs played 14 minutes. Lakers, one minute. Yep. Cleveland, six minutes. Yeah. Atlanta, six minutes. Hey, and man, but there's no... He got 15. So he yet to be on the court to have a defensive pre presence, right? Correct me sure. if I'm wrong. Sure, you know, no, absolutely. He can be a defensive presence from absolutely. the bench, yelling at the players when they shoot and whatnot. But, but, but those... I, but those minutes that he's putting in, he's hustling every single play, right? Like, granted, we see the same thing from Nasir Little. But is it, I don't know, maybe it's just a coincidence that we sign this guy and we start playing some of the best basketball we've played all season? No, I'm going back to where uh, Terry Stotts is still tinkering with the lineup, man. Yeah. The six minutes he got with Atlanta and Cleveland, those were garbage minutes. You know, mm -hmm. we were already going to lose to Atlanta. We were down by like 18 when he came in, played those six minutes. We beat, you know, Cleveland by over 30 when he played the last garbage six minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, How about I, wish, I, wish, I, could, I wish I could I'm, support you up. No, no, no. You know I'm, not, I mean? I'm not saying that's the difference. I'm just, I'm asking, like, because I'm, I'm legitimately yeah. curious. Like, what do you guys think is, is the difference? Because I think Rocco. I've, Rocco's the difference, man. You think it's Rocco? Rocco. Yeah. He's, he does those unsung stats, man. But he's, you know, but he's, he's been he's doing only getting that. three, five points a game, but that's that's not the thing. The defense is the deflections, the diving on the floor, the taking a charge. Yeah, the absolutely. A block, but the, he's been doing that all season. Just, yeah. I feel like he's just picking it up more with the absence of DJJ not out there on the court. Yeah. You know, another thing I want to say about Rocco, I see you're about to say something, Rocco. Hold on one second. One thing I wanted to say about Rocco is, does anyone else feel like he should be a better shooter than what he is? God, yes. Because yeah. his form looks so good. Am I, yeah. am I wrong here? Yeah, he's like that creative player where you're like, yeah, man, I'm going to make this <laughs> great wing and I'm going to select this beautiful stroke. But like you don't got the stats. So like you look good out there, but like, you just can't sink <laughs> a bucket. Brick everything. <laughs> like, that's exactly what it is. And you like you only really know how to play defense, you know, just right? Because that's, that's all that's all the sticks, man, is defense. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm going to say as far as our defensive presence or just our ratings are higher on the defensive end the last 10 games I think what it's really due to is um, the fact that Terry Stotts has shrunk the rotation so mm -hmm. the less people the less variables that you have on the floor the less there is for people to mess up and I I'm think the eight rotation that we have I think there's some natural defensive chemistry there. And I know that mm -hmm. Rondé Hollis Jefferson hasn't been playing a lot of minutes or playing important minutes, but I want to say that when he does play important minutes and you stick him in there with Norman Powell, like they're actually a pretty good tandem on the defensive end. And I think the reason being is because where did he play before he came to us? He played in Toronto. He played in Toronto, baby. So if you have some, like, some familiarity on the floor, right mm -hmm. and Norman Powell he's a baller man on the defensive end like we don't we're not oh, giving yeah. him credit like he oh, yeah. definitely makes switches very fast he's his undersized but he's smart man he is absolutely mm -hmm. smart and if you look at his at his games he's a positive he's a net positive for for defensive rating so I think it's a mixture of Powell and then Nurk being healthy and then also mm -hmm. just shrinking that lineup I think we have something great, and you know what? Is Stott's job, is it safe now? Uh, Do you see, think it's safe? I don't know, safe? man. I don't know. I, I, think they, I think they need to have a, a deep playoff run for it to be safe. I mean, we were yeah, joking the around. Mill, the rumor mill is, tw it's, 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 it's rumoring, man. Ooh, I know. I mean, that we saw that Bleacher Report, right? And me and, mm -hmm. me and Tim were joking around. We're like, hey, like Stotts was thinking, like, just late at night, 
throwing back some beers and was like, maybe I should start this random guy, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Maybe he could save my job. <laughs> and it might be working. It might be it working. Might be working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's crazy enough to work. Right. Um, What did you guys think of that report, though? Ahead of the playoffs, too. I'm going to start with you, Blazer Ben. Do you think Stotts, do you think... Do you think is is gone? Yeah, man. I I, I don't want to because I love the guy. He's a great guy. He's a, he's a he's a player's coach. But I think his tenure here in Portland has run out. You know, bearing a Western Conference Finals run, if we can even do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the rumors of who is it, Jason Kidd from the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, coming in, or even Nate McMillan making a return because he's an interim coach right now in Atlanta. Nice. God, Dude, Atlanta has been on a tear right now, but I also love Atlanta's lineup. They're fast. They're, right. They know what they're doing. They're finally gelling. So, you know, it, and then the, what was the other one? What was the third one? Chauncey Bell? Chauncey. Chauncey. Mm-hmm. Chauncey. Is he coaching right now? I think he's an assistant, isn't he? Is he assistant? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm all for ex-players becoming coaches because, I mean, mm-hmm. they feel like they've they've served their time as a player and now they can pass it on as, a, as an extreme mentorship to the young players coming in too, you know, mm-hmm. building a, a good culture for the whole team and the environment. You know, as long as Dame's on board, you know, you got to get your leader on board. So, mm-hmm. I, don't I mean, know, what man. better than to have a, a head coach that was a former point guard, right? To get yeah. some respect from Dame Lillard. Tim, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't think Stotts is going to be here again, unless there's a deep playoff run. I don't think Stotts is, is staying. Um, you know, I, I appreciate everything he, he's done uh, up until this season. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's been it's been kind of a rough go for him, too, though. Like, dealing with so many injuries, like, any coach is going to have a tough time this season. I just think that's just kind of the way things go. Um, you know, we've been hypercritical about his, his lack of rotations, yeah. like his, his lack of creativity. Um, and I think maybe he got stuck in a rut. <laughs> I think he got stuck in a rut too. And, and unfortunately, I think it's, it, it may cost him his job. Now, as far as, you know, these other prospects coming in to replace him, dear God, please don't bring in Nate McMillan again. No, I, I, will, no, I don't, I don't want that either. I don't even know don't, what I'll do, but you know, I think, I think Chauncey could, I mean, he's, he was a super heady guard when he was in the league. I think he could probably be a pretty good head coach. You know, Jason Kidd, I don't know if he got a legitimate shot in – in. Well, I don't think it was Brooklyn at the time, was it? Was it still in New Jersey? I don't you know. You know, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't know if he got a, a, a legit shot over there. Um, I, I don't see him being our savior. I don't see him I being heard, our – I heard Greg Bird. Oden's coaching. He maybe can come in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My goodness. That's, yeah. Talk about throwing Hail Marys. <laughs> You know, as a coach, looks like Jason Kidd was with the Brooklyn Nets, Brooklyn Nets, and then Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. And now he's an assistant with the LA Lakers. Um, Tim, you should know by now, man. We don't like follow-up questions like that. We don't like we don't like spitting out facts <laughs> on the spot. We're not good. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'll, I'll make sure I'll make sure to tell you beforehand. <laughs> but man, so I'm I'm with you guys though. Like, I'm I'm on that train where it's like Stotts. This is it, man. You got to do it this year or or it's the highway. It's the highway. And anyway, I'm actually going to kind of go bring us all the way back. Do you guys want to <laughs> talk about the Spurs? Because we waxed them. Oh, we 124 yeah. to 102. Like real quick, Tim, what did you think of that game? Dude, I, I had a feeling we were going to put up big numbers in that game. Um, you know, Dame, Dame hit us with another 30. Uh, Nurk, man, he keeps proving me wrong, dude. I, yeah, I really didn't think we'd be seeing this kind of production from Nurk. You are uh, eating your words right now. Oh, a hundred percent. And I'm glad to do it. I'll do it every, every, every game. Um, yeah. but Nurk, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Nurk. He looks like he's starting to be the Nurk of old. And I mean, he's, he's such a difference maker when he's playing at this level. Um, that, also, though, I, I don't think the Spurs had anybody to throw at Nurk or Cantor. Like, Jacob they, they Poto? Really yeah, what, what's he going to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I, I think it was a good confidence boost for Nurk. Yeah. Um, so I think it's Jacob Poto, I 
think it is. Sir. I think it's Jacob. Is yeah. it portal or is it pronounced portal? Because I feel like the announcers, portal. I feel like the announcers were saying portal. Pro- I, I'm not sure. I think it's portal. I want to say portal. Ben, All right, we'll go with portal. I don't know. I, I was out to dinner last night. I was watching it on the, on the big screen. I didn't, I didn't have audio, so I'm uh, sorry. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Regardless. <laughs> yeah. What did, did, what did you, you see think of Patty that game? Mills out there? <laughs> That's another guy yeah. I like to I like to see thriving. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, I, I, Patty Mills. Yeah. You can't you can't forget the three goggles. You know that was him yep. and, and Wes Matthews as well. I think oh, I have yeah. a pitch. I have a picture of me and Patty Mills when he did a signing at the mall. <laughs> Tim, I think you were there. For I that. was there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Patty Mills' signature. I think Marcus Camby was there too, man. Yep. Where's Marcus Camby? Ooh, Shout out. Guy. Shout out. Uh, but yeah, as far as the Spurs game, man, you know, at, at halftime, uh, we were 8 for 21 for threes, and the Spurs were 3 for 9. You know, mm-hmm. and so that was our bread and butter, and it was working. It got us going. We, had, we out-rebounded them on the offensive side 10 to 3, you know, mm-hmm. which gave us second chance points 14 to their 2. You know, normally we're on the opposite end of that, and the other team is thriving on those second chance points, and we're struggling. So it was good to see a reverse of roles in that, you know. And we ended the game with uh, seven more assists than the uh, Spurs did too. Another uh, Achilles' heel for us as, as a team is the assist, you know, the distribution of the ball and scoring. Mm-hmm. So 24 assists, gotta love that. You know, yeah. we did end up beating them in rebounds, 63 to 40. Boom. When is the last time you beat the Spurs? Like you know, I said. A team that's known for their big man and rebounding. Like I said, I don't think they had anybody to go up against Nurk or Cantor. <laughs> Absolutely. Portal. And, you know, Jacob that actually, Portal. That actually <laughs> concluded the sweep. The sweep of the Spurs for the season. And, you know, they're, they're, at, they're sitting at number 10. And if, God forbid, if God forbid we make the play-in instead of the actual like six seed playoffs i don't think the spurs are a team to we to be worried about no honestly i mean this all. this game solidified that thought because in the back of my mind i kept thinking beware of popovich beware of popovich and you know i think the talent of our team definitely has been rising to the top to the top and you know with that i'm actually, i'm gonna go over the upcoming games here you know you you and Ben, Tim and Ben, actually predicted the next seven games from the last pod. And Ben went with four and three. Tim went with five and two. And we have a win against the Cavs, a win against the Lakers, a win against the Spurs. And we have four games left. The Rockets, the Jazz, the Suns, and the Nuggets. So Tim and Ben both got the Cavs right. Tim and Ben both got the Lakers right, and Tim and Ben got the Spurs correct. Bla- uh, Blazer Ben, I wanted to ask you, is are the last four, are those correct? Were you unsure about the Rockets, the Jazz, the Suns, but you thought the Nuggets was going to be a win? No, I thought we had, the, the Rockets were going to be a win for sure. You know, the Rockets are bottom of the barrel. I don't even think John Wall's playing right now, so, you know, mm-hmm. not sure who's on the Rockets. Uh, but, you know, the Jazz, you know, Donovan Mitchell looks like he's going to be out for the remainder of the regular season. So, I yeah, mean, if I can reverse my role on that one, we're going to beat the Jazz. You know, Joe Ingles and, 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 and Bogdanovich, they're not going to have a game. We know we're going to hold them from their threes. You know, Mike Conley is not going to come in and tear us up like he always does. So we're going to beat – I'm going to go with we beat the Jazz. But the Suns, Suns uh, um, I'm going to veto the Suns. You know, because it's not a home game; it's away. Uh, and I'm gonna gonna say we beat the Nuggets because it's our home game. Yeah, so, six and one. You know, so six yeah. and one is is the new Blazer Ben prediction, Tim. Do you I, change I, yeah. your yeah, tune too? I'm, yeah, I'm going with that. I'm I'm 100 going with that. I think I I, I actually didn't realize uh, that about the the Jazz. So yeah, dude, I'm taking a win over the Jazz too. Uh, Suns yeah. are gonna be tough, man. I mean, top of the league there, man. They're 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 gonna be tough. Um, but yeah, I, I think we can still eke out a win against the Nuggets. It's gonna be a close game. That that's gonna be a battle, man. I you gotta love those games though against the Nuggets. Um, plus, I just like, especially if Nurk's playing at this level, man. I love it when he beats up on the Nuggets. I love it, <laughs> man. I I love it too. And that game actually might be a preview for the playoffs, which is crazy to say. 
right? Yeah. It might be a preview for the playoffs. We might be stuck playing against each other anyway. So who knows if we're even... If maybe both of our teams get rest, which would actually be a plus if we're already playing each other. Anyway, I'm going to go to our next segment. And that, of course, is called giving props. And giving props, I'm going to start with the definition. It's giving applause or giving kudos to a certain person, story, or situation. So, Tim, Ben, I want to know, do you give this props? Our first story is DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. Sorry, I almost said Supersonics. Of the Seattle (laughs) Seahawks. Placed 15th in his Olympic sprinting trial. Olympic. Holy moly. Look at the size of him compared to the other guys. <laughs> Plays your Ben. I want to know. Do you give DK props? Uh, bro, stay in your lane, man. Stay in it. Stay where you are successful in the NFL. You're thriving. You're doing what you do with the Seahawks. Don't, don't, don't steer out of your lane, man. I mean, fifteenth. I think that was last place in in the trials. Was that my correct? Am, am I wrong in that? I think you're right. Yeah, no problem. I'm pretty sure you're right. Tim, what do you think, my friend? Keep trying, DK. Keep trying. I give him props for trying, man. <laughs> like how how often do you get a chance to, to go for the Olympics? You know what I'm saying? Like if he if he aspires to be an Olympic sprinter, do it, man. Yeah. Obviously, you just need to shed a little bit of weight. You're strong yeah. as hell, man. Like just Absolutely. just shed a little bit of weight, and you got it. But I mean, obviously. You don't want to. You don't want to impact your your bread and butter, right? Like, like don't 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 put your your future with the the NFL in jeopardy. But yeah, man, keep trying, man. Why not? Man, I'm gonna give him props too, because I'm a 49er fan and I want him to be successful in this whole sprinting thing. Because I don't want to see no more <laughs> touchdowns. I don't want to see no more touchdowns against my team. DK, do your thing, man. Go to the Olympics for the next story. I have. It's a sturgeon was caught, and it is the size of an NBA player. It was pulled out of the Detroit River in Michigan. It measures at six foot ten and two hundred and forty pounds. Dang. Ben, I want to know. Do you give it props? Yeah, I mean, just for the people that can't see that, six foot ten inch, two hundred forty pound fish. Let's give a little uh, visual reference for people. Zach Collins is uh, 6'11", 250. Holy so moly. That's a Zach Collins that they pulled out of the <laughs> river. <laughs> you know, they measured it, they tagged it, they released it back into the uh, into the river to live its life. Uh, reportedly, it was 100 years old, too, this sturgeon. Yeah, it, man. They, I know and they the, live long. Yeah, I mean, but the highlight of the whole article was in the comments section, you know, where someone comments that an NBA center still flops more. I mean, <laughs> Love I mean they're, they're not wrong. They're not wrong on that. So, but you know, that's a pretty, pretty amazing thing, you know, to catch a, to catch a fish the size of an NBA player like Zach Collins, uh, just throw it into your boat. Pretty crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Ben gives it props. Tim, what do you say? Are, are we giving props that they caught it or that, that they gave it back or just the fact that it's so huge? Just the fact yes. that it's huge, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes to it Props. all. Yes to it all. I know I know some avid fishermen probably caught some about that big. They're like, yeah, that's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give props. I've never caught a sturgeon that Tim, big. Tim gives it props, too. You know, I'm going to give it props as well. I mean, Zach Collins. Zach Collins. <laughs> Like, for real? Are, that's are you, a crazy visual, dude. Are you saying that's all the Blazers got to do is just go fishing and they'll pull out another, another Zach Collins that might actually play? You know, plug out the middle? <laughs> that sounds good to me. For our next story, we have Antonio Brown gets roasted for working out with rapper 6 9 In quotes, oh, heck no. And that was from the former player, Jared Smith, and then the former NFL player, Terrell Pryor, said... Dang, AB. So he's getting he's getting some hate for working out with 6ix9ine, Tim. I want to know, do you give AB props for working out with 6ix9ine? I mean, why? The dude's not, dude's not a, he's not in the NFL, man. Like he never was, right? Like why? He's just this is just a publicity stunt, right? Like look at him, like he. 
There's no way he could have stopped AB right there. Absolutely. There's dead. no way. So all I'm saying okay. is, AB, you better watch what you say and do around this man. Yeah, no. <laughs> no problem. There's no no secrets in that room right there, regardless. <laughs> man. No, you know, no. you better be one the, lips. <laughs> Yeah. One of the comments on that is it says, from being the best receiver in the league to a third string at Tampa and now doing workouts with a snitch. Hashtag rock bottom. You know? Hey, yep. Ouch. Trouble, you know, just seems to attract trouble. You know, both of them have their own things that they're dealing with and have dealt with in the past. Uh, maybe they're relatable on that sense, but, you know. Not only that, are they yeah. are they playing in a garage? Like, are they just in AB's garage tossing random yeah. <laughs> footballs? Like, you're, so that's you're AB working graffiti out with 6 on the wall. Air quotes? Yeah, that's probably his place, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think Antonio Brown has entered the Dennis Rodman phase of his career, <laughs> where like he was shot up to the top too high, he got too too fast, it kind of made him a little crazy in the brain, and is like, who else is absolutely crazy that I could kick it with? <laughs> how about I work out with he's, six nine? That sounds he settled like a great all his, idea. He settled all his lawsuits from last season from his trainer and, and whatnot. And he's like, oh, Tom Brady's gonna pick me up. Cool, I'll win a ring. Awesome. And now I'm gonna go work with you know the lowest of the low, Takashi six nine. Like what? <laughs> Absolutely crazy. I don't think crazy. any of us are giving props here. No props no. all around. And for our last one. I hate to bring this to light because I don't like when people break up, man. I don't like when power couples break up. And what bigger power couple than Bill and Melinda Gates cutting ties? But now Tinder. Tinder had something to say about this. Tinder has a warning saying, Catfishers beware. Trying to impersonate Bill Gates now that he's freshly divorced. Tim, I want to know, do you give Tinder props? Sure. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Isn't there another website that, that people would use like 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 sugardaddy.com or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's There's true. gotta be something different than Tinder, right? Like but the, you know but the Tinder quote on there though, man. The hey, my name is Microsoft. Can I crash at your place tonight? <laughs> that, was, that was good, man. That's, That's a good awesome. one. That's awesome. Tim, uh, you give it props. I, I think I think I'm gonna give Tinder props for saying that you know catfishers beware, but I think I think I want I kind of want to give these catfishers props too because some of this stuff is kind of hilarious. <laughs> like just from a comedic standpoint, this is, that's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a better what a better way to end than you know on Tinder and Bill Gates, and, you know, sliding like, into your DMs. For real, man. Like you really think Bill Gates is using Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Ben, do you give this props? Yeah, man, I'll give I'll give Tinder props, and I'll give anybody props that tries to uh, to replicate Bill Gates. You know, good luck. Yeah. yeah, definitely good luck. You know, I'm gonna give it props too. I mean, shout out to just warning people that catfishers are out there, and guys, don't don't be fooled. Like, you really think Bill Gates is out there replying to you? You know, sending you emojis. You know what I mean? Anyway, moving on. You know, that is that is it for the pod. That is it for the pod. And I'd just like to thank Blazer Ben. Thanks for giving us an inside scoop inside Moda Center recently. It was fun to hear that story. Thank you for being on the pod. No problem. Thanks for having me. I was glad to be part of that first home game back. And, uh, you know, we live it for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And RJ, our video producer, always giving us video when we need it on youtube rj thank you for being on and our last thank you of course goes to our fans whenever we're having games and we're on twitter just having twitter fingers you guys are also having twitter fingers with us giving us ideas and just giving us content for the show this is all you guys pretty much so keep at it tim what you got to say well before i end the show we should say happy mother's day one more time to all the rip city mothers out there Rip City Mothers, happy Mother's Day. Well, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to rate, follow, and subscribe if you're digging what we're saying. Remember to stay safe out there, Rip City. We'll catch you next time on the Busted Bucket Podcast. Thanks for listening.